Hello, I'm Locke Meredith. I'd like to invite you to join me on the next Legal Lines, where my guest is Ben Clapper. He's the Executive Director for Louisiana Right to Life. We're going to talk about some cases pending in front of the United States Supreme Court that affect abortion or can. There are two cases where bottom line is either they keep abortion the way it is and it's allow, disallowed, except regulated by the state. They may say, guess what? We're not regulating it. States can. They decide whether you're going to have it or not or an in-between. So join us on the next Legal Lines with Ben Clapper. I'm all your lock, Meredith. If you're battling an insurance company because of a wreck, not your fault, and they're not calling you back or being fair, whether you hire us at all, give us a call, 272-5555, or email Lock Meredith, Sean Fagan and Associates. You have nothing to lose. Hi, I'm Sean Fagan of Lock Meredith, Sean Fagan and Associates. When insurance companies have been unfair, we've never been afraid to go to trial. Fighting hard to protect your rights, we never settle a case out of convenience. We only settle when it's right for you. Whether you hire us at all, give us a call. Hi, I'm Mitchell Meredith. Injuries happen when you least expect them to, making your life more complicated. At Lock Meredith, Sean Fagan & Associates, we know this and we strive to help each of our clients during these times. Whether you hire us at all, give us a call at 272-5555. I'm lawyer Collins Lock Meredith. Trust is important when hiring an injury law firm. At Lock Meredith, Sean Fagan & Associates, thousands have trusted us and gotten the results they deserved. Visit us at LockMeredith.com. Whether you hire us at all, give us a call 272-5555. Hello, welcome to Legal Lines. I'm Locke Meredith. I'm pleased to have back on the show Ben Clapper. Ben is the Executive Director for Louisiana Right to Life. And we're going to talk about some issues that are in the news right now. It's regarding Roe v. Wade and abortion in America. Ben, pleasure to have you back. Great seeing you again, Locke. Um, we'll hit those cases. Uh, yeah. There's one that's coming out of Mississippi and one that's coming out of Texas. Right. But quickly tell folks a little bit about the Right to Life organization, kind of what y'all have accomplished in the past, yeah. even most recently the, the constitutional amendment on yeah, abortion, yeah. and, uh, and kind of update them on where we are. Sure. Well, Louisiana Right to Life, founded in 1970, well before my time, but great people who were concerned about what was happening across the nation with abortion being legalized. And then in 1973, abortion was legalized through Roe v. Wade, all nine months of pregnancy, virtually any reason or sadly no reason at all and in all 50 states. And we've had shows about that, going That's in right. depth about, about all the reasons Absolutely. and how that occurred. So we were formed for the reason of trying to restore the right to life in Louisiana to protect unborn children from abortion and any destruction of innocent human life. So our work focuses in the state legislature passing laws and preventing other laws from being passed that are against life, passing pro-life laws, involved in the political arena, electing and uh, you know, engaging with politicians. And y'all been very effective in the, yeah, in the in legislative Louisiana. field. You know, we also do work in the educational realm, trying to educate people about abortion. In and the, the community, That's directly right. there. And the alternatives with young people, adults, college students, and then supporting alternatives to abortions as well. Supporting adoption, strengthening adoption, uh, improving what, how we offer pregnancy services to women who may be considering abortion but may decide to parent. You know, we want to build a culture that supports women both before and after birth right. so that they don't feel like abortion is an option that they have to choose. So, um, you know, our organization has been very successful. Louisiana, at least right now, is ranked as the number two pro-life state in America. Had I, been one, you said. Well, we really are number one. <laughs> it's, it's all, something's got good messed thing, up. But yeah, absolutely. So we're leading in that capacity. You know, last year was our Love Life Constitutional Amendment was the first time abortion in itself has been on the ballot in Louisiana. Not only did we pass the amendment by 62% of the vote, but we had more votes in favor of that amendment than any ballot initiative or candidate for office in Louisiana. And remind history. folks what it does. Yeah, it ensures that in Louisiana there can't be a Roe v. Wade here where they can't establish a right to abortion in the state's constitution, which is critical when Roe v. Wade's overturned because then abortion advocates can't go to the state Supreme Court and say, look, abortion is in our state's constitution. Takes the power away from our court, Supreme right. Court, to do what the United States Supreme That's Court right. did to all 50 states and every That's human right. being it's in It's happened America. in, I think, 13 other states where they've made many Roe v. Wade decisions protecting abortion. We don't want that to happen in Louisiana. The power stays with our legislature. All right, let's, let's go back. Quickly explain kind of the history of abortion, because I think people think 
we had this forever and, and all that. Explain, explain sure. how this has occurred in the last 40, 50, 60 years. Well, in the mid 60s, there were just a few states that began legalizing abortion in rare circumstances. Maybe when the, the child's health was in danger or maybe the maternal health was in danger. And then there were some states that legalized it in uh, early pregnancy and then some in rape and incest. So when you, we got to January 22nd, 1973, there were just maybe five to 10 states that had liberalized their abortion law just in some circumstances. I think maybe one state had legalized abortion in all circumstances, but then Roe v. Wade came through. Now, what about the other states? Did well, abortion was illegal. 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 Okay. Every unborn child was protected by law. Now, were, were abortions happening illegally? Of course, just like illegal things happen all over the country, right? But our law needs to reflect our morals and our values of who we are as a people, and that's what Louisiana had. In fact, our law from January 1973 is still on the books today, saying that Louisiana should protect unborn children. It's just the Supreme Court that's prevented us from enforcing that law in the state. The gods of America. That's right. And so in a seven to two decision, they decided, hey, Louisiana, you need legal abortion. And within a year, there were, uh, you know, tons of abortions happened in Louisiana. It's remarkable. Yeah, in, in Louisiana, the height of abortion was about 1982, 20,000 abortions a year happened in Louisiana. In 2020, there were 7,448. So we're saving babies in Louisiana from abortion. Our abortion numbers come down precipitously since 2014. It's declined by another 27%. So we're saving babies here, but we, there's 7,448 too many abortions happening. We need to save all those babies and, and help their mothers. Approximate total number of babies aborted in the nation, in the United States of America, and the world is what? So in America, it's just under a million abortions happening every year right now. Thankfully, the numbers come down from about a height of 1.6 million abortions per year in the 90s. So that's been a great trend. How, how, do we have a total since Roe v. Wade? Yeah, it's I, over I 60 million that's abortions what in the U.S. 60 million 60 million. Now, Americans. worldwide, the numbers are incredibly difficult to isolate. Places like China and Russia, you right. know, are not exactly willing to tell you. But there's some In fact, estimates. I just heard, uh, or read rather, that one of the Supreme Court justices in considering arguments right. made an observation that our law is perhaps as qu equivalent to China and Russia, right. maybe North Korea too. We have some bad friends when it comes to- So interesting, to, uh, all yeah. right. So, so the, the nation has constantly, almost in, from the beginning, been moving away from, from the pronouncement by the, the gods of America called the Supreme Court justices. Yeah. So, where are we today? Yeah, well, today we are in the midst of some epic Supreme Court cases, two of them that have the capacity to change the landscape of legal abortion in America. With the Supreme Court, a state like Louisiana is not allowed to protect unborn babies before 20 weeks right now because of the Supreme Court. And the whole concept of 20 weeks is viability, right? That's right. Roe v. Wade came up with this and it's been kind of expounded upon and yeah. really ignored in some respects. Yeah, the Explain most recent, the whole viability Sure. So uh, Roe v. Wade was in 73, but then 1992 was the Planned Parenthood versus Casey case that updated Roe v. Wade a little bit, left the core holding in place, was, which was it before fetal viability. Fetal viability means when the child can live outside the womb with medical intervention, right? So Been uh, birthed? That's right. Completely outside the womb? Outside the womb. Okay. And it, at about 20, outside the body. That's outside right. the mom's outside body. The, that's right. At about 22 weeks. Now, that child is still in the NICU on a respirator at 22 weeks. If anybody has had nose children who were born premature, sure. right? I mean, t so about 20, 22 weeks right now is the basement of fetal viability in America when we can keep a child outside the womb. Now, the crazy thing is that that's changed over the past right. 50 years, right? As medical technology improves, we're gonna be able to keep babies alive more and more. So the fact that our human rights depend on- when Medical we, technology. It, it's absurd. The whole thing is based on lies and fallacies, but that's what the Supreme Court did. They said before viability, you can't prohibit abortion. And so we have the, the, the two attacks. One is uh, the Texas law basically says no abortions if you detect a heartbeat, mm -hmm. right? That's right. And the Mississippi uh, law or case mm -hmm. says that uh, viability, it, it, it's questioning or it's kind of tackling this whole viability yeah, thing. It's, it's reduced from 
viability currently defined 20 to 24 weeks, right? Yeah. yeah. They can live outside mom's body, right. but they've dropped it down to 15 weeks. Or they've said, we don't want the viability standard. We want to protect babies at 15 weeks. And that's the case that was just heard at the Supreme Court in oral arguments. And that has the potential to overturn or modify Roe v. Wade. All right, we'll continue this on the sure. next segment. This is Lock Married with Legal Lines. My special guest, Ben Clapper. Executive Director, Louisiana Right to Life. We'll be right back talking about abortion. Hi, I'm Sean Fagan of Locke Meredith, Sean Fagan & Associates. Open the phone book or look online. There are plenty of lawyers to choose from. And if you ask any of them, they'll agree that the vast majority of claims settle without ever having gone to trial. And I'll tell you, any lawyer can settle a claim. It's not hard to settle a claim, but it takes hard work to get a client what he or she deserves. At Lock Meredith, Sean Fagan Associates, we have a proven record of working hard for our clients. Whether you hire us at all, give us a call. Welcome back to Legal Lines. I'm Lock Meredith. We're talking about abortion. We've got two very serious challenges to the abortion case called Roe v. Wade in the United States Supreme Court right now. Ben Clapper is Executive Director of Louisiana Right for Life. Let's dive back in. Sure. So we kind of gave a historical context of abortion in America. Um, 60 million babies uh, aborted since Roe v. Wade, approximately. Now we've got two cases. One is a heartbeat case that was in Texas, yeah. uh, a law passed in Texas, and the other is a Mississippi case. Yeah. Let's talk about the heartbeat case first sure. from in Texas. So Texas's law says that when we can detect the unborn child's heartbeat, which is generally around six, seven weeks. Now the heartbeat begins beating at about three weeks, 22 days, but this is when science can detect the heartbeat through a Doppler monitor or things like that. Which is much sooner? Well, no, it's gonna be six or seven weeks. So three weeks is when the baby physiologically, their heart actually begins beating, but then once medical technology can detect the heartbeat, that's when they're saying abortion can't happen. So they passed their law not long ago. We passed our heartbeat law similar in 2019. Mm -hmm. The difference was that Texas put a component on it that made the citizens of Texas the people that enforce the law, not the state. And that's this what, is really interesting. I it mean, is, it's, it's unique. Right. It's out of the box thinking. That's right. And basically, it eliminated the state being the actor to go after the abortion clinics and, li and limit it. It's it's right. giving the power to the people. That's right. And so because of that, and because the courts honestly didn't really know how to handle the law. The law has been allowed to protect babies, and as of today, it's protecting babies from abortion in Texas. Now, the Supreme Court is still reviewing the Texas law, and there's the chance that they're going to decide to temporarily delay the enforcement of that law pending further legal challenges, because I think even the Supreme Court is still trying to figure out exactly with that civil enforcement component how that works. But enough and to explain say that, your understanding of that civil enforcement. Sure. So basically, who, the law, who gets to bring the lawsuit against? The abortionist. Basically, it says that any citizen of Texas, if they believe a abortion facility or an abortion physician has done an abortion, they can file suit in civil court for damages, I believe, up to $10,000 per each abortion. So any I guess citizen, what I'm struggling with is how does a person who doesn't even know the person who had the abortion have standing to go after the facility or, or the abortion doctor? And how do they have And the how evidence? do they prove damages? Like, how do you, sh that's an interesting thing. I yeah. understand the wrangling uh, with and, it And what's interesting is that it, there's been no lawsuit to date on this because once the law passed, the abortion- Everybody was, stopped. Everybody stopped. Which was probably very, very much anticipated. Right, but then it's hard for the court. You normally, it's it would be on appeal of a case that a higher court would get involved, but they're still trying to analyze this ahead of any legal challenge to it. So it's just so much going on with it. There's so much that I think the attorneys and the judges are still trying to figure out. Enough to say that it's been protecting babies in Texas, which is great. We'll see what the longevity of it. I think it's also going to be wrapped up in what happens with the Texas That's right, the where I was going, case. Because you could feel a tidal wave of, right. of kind of demand by the population of America, the majority anyway. Um, right. This needs to change. So, That's right. So let's shift gears then. The Mississippi case, Dobbs. Dobbs versus right. Jackson Women's. Kind of get here. give the context of, of what's so going on. So in 2019, there. Mississippi passed a law saying that at 15 weeks you can't have an abortion after 15, 15 weeks. 15 weeks. Viability was 20 to 24. Right. Live get, outside. You can live outside that. mom's body. Right. Before that, 
you really weren't going to live uh, right. based on current medical technology. But now they're saying Mississippi says you can't have an abortion after the child is 15 weeks age gestation. Period. Period. Arbitrary number. Boom. 15. That's right. Absolutely. Because it's so, not related to viability right. or you could argue it's not. That's right. So then three months later, Louisiana passed a similar law, 15 weeks. Which is weeks, very, very smart. And we put our law contingent upon the outcome of the Mississippi court case. So we have the same law as the Mississippi law right. that was passed in Mississippi. It's been passed by our legislature, That's right. signed by the governor. That's right. And it is in force, except that it's it's suspended until we see what happens Correct. with the Supreme Court reviewing right. the Mississippi case. Right. So the Mississippi passed their law. The district court struck it down as a violation of constitutional Roe v. Wade. The appellate court did the same thing. Then the Supreme Court had to decide, do we uphold the lower court rulings, which would be the customary way for them to affirm their precedent. Oh, they could have just left it alone. They could have done that. They anything. didn't have to take they, the case, I don't think. Four justices, it took four justices to take the case. They stepped into the thicket here. So they want to address abortion Absolutely. in America. They did not. They weren't solving a controversy of between lower courts. This was their choosing that they wanted to review this So case. this is, the bottom line is, this is extraordinarily uh, reflective of the justices that were recently appointed to the United States Supreme Court by President Trump. I would think yeah, they make a big difference here because Huge. that's three of the six justices that are in, that in oral arguments on December 1st that we heard, it was clear that there were six of the nine justices that wanted to make a change from the past. And that's where we are, that they have to decide what that change is. So let's, t let's dive into, because I think it was December 1, oral arguments took right. place in front of the Supreme Court. Right. And you had the folks representing the Mississippi yep. uh, and its legislation, and then you had those who were attacking it, saying it's unconstitutional. Right. And they got in front of the nine justices right. and presented arguments and answered questions mm -hmm. um, posed by those justices. That's right. And so we have uh, questions by what every one of the justices. They right? all they all talked, which is unusual. Sometimes right. uh, uh, Justice Clarence Thomas. Doesn't say a thing. Didn't ask anything for years. And his focus, he kept grilling. And he's a genius. He <laughs> kept grilling the other side and saying, where is the right to abortion in the Constitution? And they said, hidden in the liberty and the privacy and all these other things. But Penumbra. He just, he just kept harking on that. And you could show, and he's the only not of the nine justices that has on record as wanting to overturn Roe v. Wade in legal writing. So we can assume he's with us on there. Gorsuch and Alito both expressed their preference in a subtle way of wanting to overturn Roe v. Wade. Justice Alito had a great line. He said, well, doesn't the unborn or the fetus have a interest in their own life, you know, in there? So it seemed that Implying they Implying the board. fetus is a person. That's right, absolutely. Where the Constitution That's right. protects. That's right. Justice Kavanaugh life. said some of the most interesting things. He talked a lot about how the Constitution should be scrupulously neutral on abortion. It shouldn't be pro-life or pro-choice. It should leave it to the states. It seems to us that Kavanaugh is on board for overturning Roe v. Wade. So I think that's four right there. Justices, Chief Justice Roberts and uh, Justice Barrett, uh, they didn't tip their hand too much. Justice Barrett, interestingly, brought a very human element to it. She talked about how safe haven and adoption are available for women if they don't want to be mothers, if they're pregnant and they don't want to be mothers, that they can place their child for adoption. Uh, Justice Roberts, Chief Justice. Chief Justice Roberts. He's he, always a swing these he days. He seemed to be trying to find middle ground. Something he he expressed his lack of he's comfort. He's a politician. He expressed his lack of comfort with the viability standard. And he's the one that compared our abortion law to China and Russia and North Korea. And so he asked the question: Is there another standard short of overturning Roe v. Wade, but wouldn't be viability? Something in between. So the the question is. Where will Justice Roberts, how far will he go? How far will Justice Barrett go who didn't say too much? All right, we'll continue this on the, on the last segment. This is Locke Meredith with Legal Lines. We have Ben Clapper, who's the executive director for Louisiana Right to Life. We're talking about abortion in America and about two big deal Supreme Court cases pending right now. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Mitchell Meredith. At Locke Meredith, Sean Fagan and Associates, we know each case and client are unique and that no two cases are the same. But one thing remains constant, and that is our passion to help our clients. After an accident, we know your life has changed, which is why we passionately fight to make you and your family whole. Remember, whether you hire us at all, give us a call at 272-5555. We're here to serve you. 
Welcome back to Legal Lines. I'm Locke Meredith. We're talking about abortion today in two very big Supreme Court cases pending right now before the court and the justices. Ben Clapper, Executive Director of Louisiana Right to Life. Let's dive back in. Sure. So, um, we've talked about the case. It's Dobbs versus Jackson. Jackson Women's Health. Okay. And it's basically resulted in the entire court deciding to overtly uh, take action when it did not have to and involve itself mm -hmm. in whether or not Roe v. Wade is still the standard in America today to get an abortion. Right. Um, you described kind of the oral arguments and the, fo the comments made by the nine justices and kind of where it looked like they might be leaning. So let's discuss the three possible outcomes, the decision that would be rendered. Sure. It takes five uh, out of the nine justice mm -hmm. to get there. Right. So how you piece that together? Yeah, three well, basic options, Well, number right? one, they could affirm Roe v. Wade, right? I, it seems hard to believe that's gonna happen. Right. Them affirming Roe v. Wade, no change in abortion jurisprudence in America. They got into this, as you said, six justices seemed willing to make a change. It's hard to believe without some sort of, who knows what goes on behind the scenes there. It's hard to believe. Now on the other side, they could overturn Roe v. Wade altogether, go back to what Justice Kavanaugh said, a scrupulously neutral constitution that's neither pro-life or pro-choice, and give it back to the state. Meaning it's decision. not outlawing, Correct. making illegal abortion. Right. What it's doing is, it's honestly, in my view, what the constitution required of it, and that is leave this stuff up to the 50 states. They're like little mini That's countries, right. and let's see what works there, and they can handle it on their own. If we got to get involved, then we will. Instead, they got involved when they didn't have to That's right. and created this mess and killed Absolutely. 60 million babies. That's but, right. So I think that they could do that. I think it's a possibility that they'll definitely, they're considering to do that. In Louisiana, if that happens, abortion would be illegal because the laws that we've passed today have prepared Louisiana for an abortion-free Louisiana. So that, so a firm Roe v. Wade, yeah, the middle is what Justice Roberts seemed to try to do, is can they get rid of the viability standard, put, uphold the Mississippi law, say in Mississippi, you can protect babies at 15 weeks, the challenge is, is they have to draw a new line. Yeah, what's the new standard? Because other states are gonna come back and file lawsuits at the Supreme Court, and those justices know that if they find a new standard, they're just gonna be besieged with a lot more litigation. Everybody's gonna be doing their own number of weeks, and probably those that are against abortion are gonna move closer and closer to... Right, and so the Supreme Court's gonna to have to have a standard, and they're gonna have a hard time finding that standard, and they know that. And that's going to be the challenge of Chief Justice Roberts is trying to find a standard and then get another justices on, justice on board because he needs at least five to be with him. Which, which would be um, the, the new Justice Barrett, new justice be. Barrett the most uh, recent yeah. justice. And like, there's other options where there could be a three to one to four de, or three to one to five decision uh, or a three to two to four decision which would affirm the Mississippi case, but mean that there's no real opinion of the Supreme Court. It could get real messy. That sure doesn't seem like that if will happen. If the six of them can't come together. They jumped in this woman pool. I know. So it's, who, I'd love to be a fly on the wall in the Supreme Court to hear what's going on right now. All right, and, and we, we won't know this for what, six months? Till June or July, late June, early July. And so those are the general three ways that they could decide this case, and it's going to have major ramifications around the country. And I think for the next hundred years, we're going to remember the Dobbs case as a seismic change in abortion jurisprudence in America. It's so fascinating that, that we have these five out of nine people unelected, there for a lifetime, unaccountable, and they're, they're telling us when life begins yeah. and what marriage is and all these things that... that uh, it's just baffling to me, it given is. the Constitution we have. But moving that aside, yeah. let's talk about um, the accomplishments of Right to Life, sure. Louisiana Right to Life in Louisiana. You've talked about being ahead of the curve here right. and getting already past the Mississippi law in Louisiana right. in case the Supreme Court upholds it right. uh, in any way, form, or fashion, I assume. Sure. Well, and I, and I think what we've done in Louisiana is we've prepared for the day when Roe v. Wade's overturned. Explain that. Yeah, so what we number one in our laws, we've passed a law in 2006 that said when Roe v. Wade's overturned, all babies are protected here. We put our Supreme Court, our uh, state Supreme uh, support, constitutional amendment Constitute. in place, you know, to make sure that laws can't be struck down at the Supreme Meaning Court. Meaning what, what we've done is eliminated our Supreme Court justices, right. the power 
to change the law That's right. because it is in the Louisiana Constitution. Right. So we've done what we had to do to make sure that when Roe v. Wade's overturned, Louisiana is abortion free. Now, what does that mean for us? Well, that means that Louisiana has to continue to help mothers right. because there were 7,448 women in Louisiana last year that had abortions. So we better be prepared to help them, right? Because through parenting and adoption, those are the solutions that are life-giving and that can help mothers in the situation. So we believe Louisiana is already ready for an abortion-free future. We have an abundance of public and private health care options for women, low-cost options, Medicaid options, private pregnancy help centers, over 40 of them in the state that are standing by helping women, just I count easily three in the Baton Rouge area that they help women before and after birth for, excuse me, in the Baton Rouge area. Explain to folks how Right to Life is organized in Louisiana. You know, y'all can't do this all on your own, sure. so you've, I assume, affiliated and yeah, joined so with we, other Yeah, so we're groups. more of the legal, educational, policy arm of the pro-life movement. And then there are over 40 smaller pregnancy help centers in communities all across the state that have women come into their facility, giving them pregnancy tests, giving them ultrasounds, giving them baby supplies, diapers, parent training, parent education, helping them be better parents. Then we have adoption agencies across the state that are working with us to help women know about the gift and the beauty of adoption, how to place their children for adoption, working with parents to choose adoption. Excellent. So, I mean, the pro-life movement is so organized. You have a network all over the state. And we're gonna, and, and there's so many resources that women have the, uh, have available to them right now in Louisiana. And that's not gonna change when abortion ends. It's actually gonna become more important that the pro-life movement continues to serve, continues to help Excellent. women. You know? All right, let's shift gears a little bit real quickly. You, let's talk about this whole judicial bypass scenario sure. that existed that at least y'all have reduced uh, abuse uh, sure, that has yeah, well, taken you know, place. In, in Louisiana, explain, if, explain what happened. It's yeah, a real case, absolutely. right? Well, when, in Louisiana, when a minor, someone under 18, wants to have an abortion, they can either get the consent of their parent or they can go to a judge and that judge can sign a bypass. Or apparently do both, right? right that's right, yeah. So sadly, what's happened is women or young girls have been able, maybe they live in uh, Monroe, they've been able to come to New Orleans where the abortion facility is and get the judge in New Orleans who maybe is in the back pocket of the abortion facility and who's getting campaign contributions. I'm not going to go there, but I understand your yeah, perspective. Yeah, well, I think it's how it is, you know. And so that, but now we passed a law that says if she wants to get a judge to give her a bypass for abortion, that needs to happen in her hometown in her home parish. So that's now law to that's prevent a law. scenario where in, in the case we were discussing, the little girl, a parent was adamant, didn't that's want right. it, said, no, I'm not giving you my consent. Yeah. Little so girl heart, was being counseled by guys who wanted to do it. And they took her over to a judge who, who okayed it. In, to a, the, in a five minute Zoom call, that judge determined that she was mature enough to have the abortion. It says no to the parent who raised her. That's right. And says, I'm in control. And they, right. they don't even have to tell the mother, the parent, that they're doing That, that they do. Been wonderful. Thank ben. You ben Clapper, Louisiana Right to Life, talking about abortion. Thank you for being with us, folks.